Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. My name is Christine. So today we have a huge clothing haul. I have been thrifting, vintage shopping. I have a couple of designer goods here. Over the last couple of weeks, Brian and I have been traveling. We started off in London. Then we went to Paris, New York, and then Miami. And this is everything that we picked up along the way. It was a pretty big, long trip for us and I did vlog every single week. So I'll go ahead and link the last vlog up in the corner. Anyways, let's go ahead and dive right in. I do have a little mic. I'm trying to up the quality for you guys. I'm gonna go ahead and start off with some of the designer vintage items I picked up. I feel like that's kind of the most exciting and then we'll move into vintage items that we've thrifted and then we'll end with some of the designer goods that I picked up in Paris. It's gonna be kind of random because I feel like we did a lot of shopping, like honestly. I don't know how we had room in our luggage to fit so much stuff, but we traveled pretty light and I do have a video all about how I packed for the trip, some of my favorite packing tips. So first thing that I picked up was this leather jacket and I actually picked this up in Miami when it was like literally 80 degrees out and so freaking warm. So we picked this up from a store called Capsule and we struggled because after the last three weeks of traveling, it was like winter everywhere we went except for Miami. So I had no clothes for the heat. So we did a little bit of shopping in Miami and I did pick up some warm weather items as well. But anyways, I have a leather blazer that I wear all the time. And the one that I have, I thrifted in New York. It's a little bit more of an oversized fit. I really like this one. It's just from like, Wilson's leather, but the fit of this is a little bit more fitted than my other leather blazer. I feel like this one is a little bit more refined and dressy. I, I can wear it for more like night out type of outfits. Where Next thing that I picked up was also from the same vintage store and they actually did some reworked designer vintage items as well. So this is actually a Burberry shirt that they actually cropped and it's really cool because the back almost has a little bit of like cinch moment. So this is really different. I have a lot of white button ups, dress shirts in my collection, but I don't have one that is cropped like this. So this is perfect for even when it's warmer. I feel like I can wear this on hot days as well. And I just love that the sleeves you can wear out if you don't want the Burberry logo to show, but if you roll it up, obviously you can have the logo out. I picture this with some really oversized baggy cargo pants, even with like a skirt, I think would look really, really pretty. And okay, next I picked up another reworked Burberry item. And if you watched the Miami vlog, you would have seen me wearing this. And I actually paired it with an Izzy Miyake skirt. And this is kind of a fun piece because of the shoulder pad. I feel like it makes it a little bit more of a bolder statement item once i find a trend that i really really like i will go all in and buy so many different variations and colors of the same type of thing so very into the vest trend right now and i love this because i think this was actually a reworked blazers and then they actually kept like the original burberry tag as well which i feel like is just kind of a cool piece if i ever wanted to resell this i feel like it would keep the value really nicely as well and it is kind of a crop fit so it's fun to style in warmer months or even colder months if i wanted to wear a sweater underneath this i think it would look really really cool so. next i have some pieces that i picked up at the real real and this was a jacket that i was really excited about when i first put it on it was really oversized and this is a trench coat from marnie but the back of it is what sold me. It just looks so classy. I love the chocolatey color and I'm very into trench coats. I love shopping the Real Real. They're having a really good Black Friday sale and I believe I picked this up for like 40% off the original price. So I think I got this for around $300, which for a designer trench coat is really not a bad price. I think I have a trench coat that I picked up from Farfetch that's not even a designer brand that's around $300 already, so. Great price, love the color of this. Then I picked up another item that was really on sale at the Real Real, and I think this was 40% off and then an additional 25% off on top of that or something like that, because I got this jacket for a really good price. This is from Lueve and it's a denim jacket. It's actually quite heavy <laughs> with me just holding it, but Lueve has been a designer that I've just started to like more and more. I also did pick up another piece from Lueve in Paris that I'll share in a second, but this is just a great jacket that both Brian and I could wear. It is really oversized. I think this is an XXL and I don't know if it's men's or women's, like it just is a really unisex 
type of jacket. I just think this is a really cool layering piece. It almost gives kind of like a Rick Owens type vibe. So I really like this. Brandon looks really good in it and it was on sale on top of the price. So I just couldn't say no to this. Um, Next thing I picked up from the rear reel is a little Gucci bag and I got this for such a good deal. Sometimes I'm surprised by the prices inside. This one I think was originally $4.25 but they're having an additional 25% off or something like that. But I ended up getting it because I feel like it is such a good little casual bag and the strap is replaceable as well if I wanted to put like a chain strap on it or something like that. It's just like a little cream ivory Gucci bag and good size for going out. It also came with a dust bag as well. And Next, I bought these shoes and this is from a brand called You May You May. I'm not exactly sure of the brand, but I picked it up when I was in London, but I ended up seeing this brand all over Paris and New York. Kind of a cool little clog. These shoes are definitely coming back into style. You're seeing a lot of the people wear the Birkenstocks and similar style looking like clog shoes. This one is a little bit kind of edgy and different and it came with a dust bag, which is really nice, but I just love the shape of the shoe. I've actually worn it a couple of times and it's quite comfortable. The color will go with a lot of different things for me and they actually kind of look like teeth. Everyone I show the shoe to, I tell them it looks like teeth and it's kind of my favorite thing because I feel like with baggy pants or even with a skirt with these peeking out, it's just kind of fun and unexpected. And I really like them. I feel like it's a fun way to wear the trend without looking like everyone else. Then another pair of shoes I picked up in the Hypey store in New York. Brandon and I were actually there during Thanksgiving week all the way through like Black Fridays. And I got these shoes for 40% off. And it's a brand called Maison Mihara Yasushiro. And Brandon, introduced me to these shoes. He bought a pair in Paris and they're just kind of like a funny, chunky, melted looking shoe. And they do lots of other styles that are kind of like inspired by mainstream sneakers. So these obviously are inspired by Converse. And it's funny because the couple of times that I've worn this out, people have commented and asked if they're hard to break in. And I guess it's kind of like a known thing about the shoes and their brands. But short answer, yes, it was such a B word to break in because they're such a stiff and kind of heavy shoe. They are really, really cute, but you do have to be aware that they're not quite as comfortable as your average sneaker. Be prepared for a lot of like pain and bruising, but I think it's so worth it. Okay, next, these are some of the Izumiyaki things I picked up. This is a Japanese designer and he does a lot of like pleating and stuff. And I feel like I've talked about this brand a lot in the last couple of months, just because I've increasingly got more and more obsessed with like Japanese fashion and street style. And I just really love the pleating that he does. I feel like no other designer or clothing brand does pleating like Izumiyaki. So I thrifted the set in London and I love the pattern of it. It's almost like a vintage floral situation. And I wore this skirt for Art Week is a matching set. I picked it up in London, I think for around 250 pounds. So it wasn't cheap, but the price was really good for Izumiyaki. I've definitely paid a lot more for not as cool pieces, I feel like. So love the set, super comfortable as well. And I've been very into longer midi skirts as well. I feel like it's more fun for me to style. Then I picked up another Izumiyaki skirt from the Real Real and this one was expensive. I think this was like 350 dollars just for the skirt alone but i love this because it kind of has like a little bit of a striping detailing throughout and it almost has like a little bit of a silver trim at the bottom of it this skirt fits a little bit different i now have three izumiyaki skirts and each one fits a little bit different on me i think they're all different sizes as well so this one is a medium and i just think it's a very versatile piece next we have a lot of vests that i picked up this is one of the vests that i picked up from a store in paris and I believe it was called Broken Arm and it was a really cool street style store. And I also had picked up this navy sweater as well, but the vest also has a brown inner lining and it is a little bit more of a like straight fit. I think it is designed as a men's vest and there's like some zips on the side as well. And this was another vest that I thrifted in New York and I was actually really excited about this. The Sherpa on this makes it a very practical vest because it helps to add a lot of warmth 
warmth. It's really easy to layer with. The color of it is also really wearable. It is kind of an oversized boxy fit. So something like this is great for both Brandon and I to share. Then this is actually a vest that Brandon thrifted in Paris. He went to the flea market in Paris and picked up a lot of really cool vintage items. And this is actually from a store called Brute. And it has that kind of like military type of quilting in it. And I've actually been seeing a lot of jackets and vests that kind of have this quilting on it. It's very much in right now. And something like this, you can actually find on eBay. Depop, you can thrift it, but I believe this one is actually reworked. And it is a thinner layer, so this makes it really great for warmer months as well. But another piece that he picked up is this puffer jacket and I actually wore it out the other day and got so many compliments on it. So many people were asking me if this was Ghani, Free People, Frankie Shop. Like it just looks like a lot of jackets that are out there right now, but this is actually vintage military. So Brandon picked it up, I think for like 10 or $15. So something like this you can find on eBay Depop. This is a style that has definitely been around for a while that is definitely coming back. And it's also great for LA winters because it, like I said, doesn't get super, super cold. So. And then last piece I'm just gonna quickly talk about. Brandon thrifted this and it's a really intense bomber jacket that actually has a built-in vest as well that you can actually take off and disconnect and wear it the pieces separately so you can have a vest and a bomber and something like this is really heavy duty. It's great for traveling because if you wanted to wear just the vest alone or the jacket or if it's really cold, you can wear them both together, but it just has a really cool fit. And then I also picked up the Stone Island sweater thrifted this and it is really oversized, but I actually wore it as a kind of a sweater dress with some boots. Really like the color of this when I picked it up and I think I picked it up for like $60 or something like that. And I just love that it's vintage Stone Island. There also is some detailing on the sleeves as well. And a couple more vintage pieces. Obviously we did a lot of shopping and then I will get into some of the designer pieces that I picked up in Paris that is a little bit more exciting. So I picked up this cargo mini skirt and this is something I thrifted in London. It's really cool and street style. Even if I wanted to wear this underneath the Stone Island sweater, I feel like this would look really cool and edgy. And, I, and then another piece that I thrifted in London is actually this vintage Prada skirt. And this was the find of the century because I was trying to haggle with the store owner, but she literally got it in the that day, so wasn't willing to budge on the price, but I got it for $50 anyways, which is really not a bad price. I love the skirt because it has a zip that goes all the way down, so that's nice and adjustable, but there's also a zip that comes from the bottom if you wanted to show a little bit more leg or have it be kind of a slit moment. Really excited to wear this in the summer. A couple more items that I picked up, this cashmere skirt. I just got back from the dry cleaners, and every time I vintage shop or thrift something, I will actually take it to the dry cleaner first just to really make sure it gets that deep clean, get any stains out of it, and it's ready to wear. This cashmere skirt I'm obsessed with. This is perfect for winter. Knit skirts are kind of a great way to kind of play with that silhouette and style when it is a little bit colder out. It's a little bit more practical because obviously it's warmer. There's a slit in the back as well that I feel like is kind of fun and unexpected, and the cashmere is really finely done. Uh, I also thrifted these Stone Island pants, and I feel like this is just kind of like a fun little piece. I love pants. I have so many pants I thrifted that I really did not need another pair in my collection, but I just love that these were vintage Stone Island. I got it from the same store that got my sweater, so I just feel like it was kind of a perfect little moment, and the material of this is a little bit thicker, so this will be great for the colder months. And this is the last little clothing bit that I want to talk about before we get into some of the bags that I picked up. This is just a big sweatshirt that I picked up from Hypebeast, and I love this hoodie because it's really thick and heavy, like like this on the hanger feels almost as heavy as like my denim Louisville jacket. It's really oversized. This is a size large, so it's something that I'm kind of swimming in, but it kind of gives a very high-end street style type vibe. And I love this sweatshirt because it has kind of a funnel neck, so you can wear it unzipped and it almost looks like it has like a big collar, or you can wear it zipped all the way up and it kind of provides a little bit of coverage and warmth if it's gonna be really, really cold where you are. Uh, so. Finally, we are getting into some of the designer portions of pieces that I picked up. This is a Lueve scarf that I picked up in Paris and I actually originally went in just for the white, but I feel like I wanted to do something a little bit more fun. Now I'm wondering if I should go back and get the white one because I feel like white maybe would be a little bit more 
practical, but because there are so many colors, it goes with so many different things. It is really warm and cozy. I haven't worn this out yet, so maybe I'll take it back and get like the all white one, but right now I do like that it's kind of a unique looking scarf. What do you guys think? Next, I have some fun items I picked up in Paris. I did do a video on this, I think a month ago now, and I did some shopping when Brian and I were in the south of France and kind of talked about the VAT refund over there, but pretty much the short gist is designer shopping in Europe is a lot cheaper than shopping in the US because you get a VAT refund, which is kind of like a tax refund on designer goods. So anyways, I picked up a bag in Goyard, yet another. I literally walked into the store and this was the last item that I was able to purchase from Goyard because I literally maxed out on my items. And right now, there's just not a lot of quantity of items right now. So if a store has something that you like in stock, it always makes you feel obligated to buy it type thing. So I kind of impulse bought a white Goyard bag that I'm not super obsessed with. So I'm thinking of selling it. So if any of you guys are interested in it, let me know, maybe DM me on Instagram, but I'm thinking of letting that one go because I love this one so much more. And I originally was looking for a green bag. The fact that they had this one in stock was fake. This was a style of bag that I was originally looking for. I just love this green so much and I don't have a bag that's kind of a fun pop of color like that. And I really have grown to love Goyard because their material feels so nice, but it's also very, very durable where I feel like I don't have to super baby this when I go out or travel with it. So this is just kind of like a fun structured little crossbody. It kind of has a similar shape to my Dior Bobby bag that I love. I feel like it is really big and roomy inside as well. And it has that like signature Goyard yellow color on the inside. There's a couple of flaps for extra storage as well. So I'm excited to wear this bag and I got it for a really good price. I also picked up a couple of goods from Chanel. I picked up one small flat bag that I am absolutely obsessed with. So I'll show this one at the end. We'll do like a little unboxing. But first bag that I picked up was actually this little crossbody it's almost like a wallet on a chain but this is a boy bag and i have been wearing this a lot especially in miami because it's like the perfect little going out bag there's not a whole lot of room inside it at all i wanted something a little bit more small and good for going out because a lot of the bags i have are a little bit bigger so something like this is perfect for what i was looking for and as a crossbody it is a little bit longer than I was hoping for, but the SA that helped me out in the Chanel actually gave me this little tool that looks like this. And it's a chain shortener, so it kind of looks like this. And you can probably buy something similar to this online on Amazon or something like that. Because if you wanted to shorten the strap, maybe I'll show you. Let's say I wanna wear it as more of a like shoulder bag. You can actually, okay, so it actually kind of opens up like this, and you just hook each of the little hooks on the chain there. So you can kind of see how that works. You can kind of just like close it in on the chain. And then there is like a lot of excess that you can then just tuck back inside the bag like that. And then you're left with a little shoulder bag. And it is a caviar leather as well. So this is great because I can kind of be rough with it and I don't have to worry about the leather scratching or anything like that. This bag is great because it actually is a lot of pockets in it as well. So there's like this little flap up here. There's a little zip if you wanted to put miscellaneous things in there. And then there's also little card slots as well if you wanted to just forget the wallet altogether and put your cards direct in here. And then this is a little pocket that I actually put my chain shortener in typically. <laughs> then I also picked up a little card holder. This one is great because it has silver hardware. So it matches with that last little boy bag and has a full zip, lots of little pockets inside. And then there's a little slot in the back as well. And then I also picked up another bag from Chanel. I actually went on a little girl's trip with my mom and my sister. And we literally went on that trip with the intention of shopping a lot. And we were really lucky because at the time that we were in Paris, there was a Chanel drop that was happening the next day. So we were able to schedule an appointment with my SA and she was able to get a lot of really cool pieces 
that had just launched in the boutique. And so a lot of people were like lining up. Some people messaged me, asking me how we we're able to even get an appointment because it is so hard to get right now. And we just got really lucky with the timing of everything. So this is probably my second favorite bag that I picked up. And I actually initially went in wanting a handle, like a bag with a handle on it. It has like matte gold hardware on it and I feel like this just looks so classy and timeless and it is also another really small bag. It's about the same size as my little boy bag that I just showed you. I think this one is lambskin. You can see the leather is a little bit softer and smoother and so this one I feel like I have to be a little bit more careful with. The inside is quilted as well and you kind of have the same features as the last bag. Beautiful bag, I'm really excited to wear it. And last little thing that I picked up Chanel before I talk about the handbag. I'm not gonna lie to you, I went kind of in this year because this was kind of like the last little shopping trip of the year and we just were offered so many amazing bags. I feel like I couldn't say no to it. So I love a good statement earring. Every single Chanel boutique that we went in, I popped in and looked at their jewelry and I was never super impressed by anything. But these ones, when I saw them in store, I was like, okay, I have to have those. So these ones are cutie little studs. They're just little hearts with a little Chanel logo. Never seen such cute little Chanel earrings. And I just love these. I'm gonna wear these so much. They are costume jewelry. A lot of the jewelry in designer boutiques are not like real gold, but a lot of the times those pieces are way too expensive anyway. So it's just kind of a fun little statement earring that you can wear for an event or occasion, but then you do have to take them off because over time they will tarnish. But I have a couple of earrings from Dior that I've worn quite a few times and haven't really had any issues with them. You just kind of have to be aware that it's not solid gold or anything like that. But. For the last bit, I thought I would take you over and do a little unboxing of the last bag that I picked up. So this one was a little bit more of a kind of splurge item, if you will. Okay, this bag I'm obsessed with. So this is actually part of their limited edition collection and it is inspired by Monte Carlo. So it's kind of got like a fun little casino theme to it, you can see there's a little casino chips on it, but the color of this is almost coral red. It almost looks like kind of a neutral, and I like that it's a subtle pop, and it's a perfect size, and I do have a little mini flat bag in the same size, but it's a little bit more of a beigey cream color, and I wore it a lot in my South France Italy trip, so I do like the size of this bag a lot, and I just feel like this is a fun little summertime bag. The hardware is almost like a matte type of gold and I love this bag so much. It brings me so much joy looking at it and I'm excited to wear it. I love actually the little casino chips and I just think it's a really fun addition to the collection. So that actually brings us to the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this massive haul. We did a lot of shopping and it was a big splurge trip for us and it's just been a really great year for me. I want to say a big thank you for following along, continuing to support along the journey, along all of our travels as well. In my day to day, I actually don't do a whole lot of shopping and as you know, Brian and I like to do a lot of vintage and thrifting as well. So I feel like for me, it's kind of a balancing between the high and the low shopping, but yeah, definitely splurge a lot. This is not like your average haul, but picked up a lot of really fun items that I'm excited to style. I also am planning to do a big end of the year luxury regrets video that I do every single year. I think this will be the third year that I do one. So make sure you're subscribed if you wanna see that video. And I have yet to do a bag collection video. So if you guys want to see a video like that, let me know. I've definitely added a lot more bags to my collection this year than I've ever added any other year. So if you guys would be interested in a bag collection video, let me know, happy to do so. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I actually am hosting an ugly sweater party here in my studio in like an hour. So I need to go get ready for that. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs up if you wanna see more content like this and, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.